Okay. Hey folks. So, um, we're going to make a little bit of a different video today. I, um, my channel normally has videos about video games or train travel or, you know, various things like that. Um, so this is a little out of the ordinary for what I typically post on my channel, but, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So, some of you may know what this, uh, logo is. Some of you may not. Um, this, uh, I just picked up today. Um, it's a Glock. Um, it's not my first Glock. Um, it's not my first 40 caliber. Um, and as a matter of fact, it's, <laughs> it's not my first Glock 40 caliber. Um, this is an upgrade. I had a Gen 3 Glock 22 chambered in 40 caliber. Um, but I'm a left-handed shooter, so, but we'll get into that in just a minute, um, why I chose to upgrade. Um, I think we want to get to the unboxing, so let's start with that. So, um, let's get right into it. Um, the cool thing about when you buy a new Glock is every one of them comes in a case like this. Now, I've bought Smith & Wessons and, um, you know, Ruger's and, and other pistols before and most of them just come in a cardboard box one of the really nice things about Glock is every one of them comes in you know it's not the best hard box but hey you know I mean they don't have to put that in but they do so they give you a nice box like this um, has the Glock logo on front all the warnings on the back you can read that if you're into it <clears throat> and then Every Glock has one of these labels on it here. And the label will tell you what's in the box, and the color will tell you a little bit more information. So I don't know what the AQ sticker is. I know the GB is for Gun Broker, and I'm going to get into that a little bit in this video as well. But if we take a look at the label here, it says G22 which is their model 22 that doesn't mean it's chambered in 22 um, some of you may know some of you may not um, Glock has kind of a goofy system for numbering their models um, so this isn't a 22 caliber it's just a model 22 and it's chambered in 40 caliber now um, I know some people don't like 40 caliber and I know some people don't like Glocks and well if that's the case maybe this video isn't for you. I happen to like both. In fact, um 40 caliber is probably my my favorite uh cartridge. <clears throat> but that's for another video. So, it tells us right here we have a G22 Gen 5 and um if you look right there, it says MOS, and that stands for, I believe, Modular Optic System. I'll get into that in a little bit, too. I specifically chose that. And then it says 3, 15 round, and that tells you how many magazines and the capacity of the magazines that come inside this box. Now, <clears throat> the labels are color-coded. Um, some states in America have uh, limitations on the capacity for magazines. Um, and some do not. I live in a state that does not have limitations on that, so I can have 15 round magazines or 22 round magazines or 30, whatever I want, I can pretty much get. But in states like, say, California, they have limitations on how many rounds a magazine can carry, and 15 rounds is considered high capacity. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They're freaking idiots over there. But anyway. Um, so, uh, California would have a white label and it would say three, 10 round and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, so this is an unrestricted, uh, Glock, meaning, uh, it has, you know, all the goodies in it. So, uh, enough talking from me. Let's open this thing up and take a look and go over some first impressions. And, uh, then I'll tell you a little bit about why I chose to upgrade and, um, Gunbroker and all the stuff that I went through. 
why I chose MOS and, and all of that. So um, before I open it, I'll just say that um, so far this has only been opened at the FFL. I have not even touched the firearm yet. In fact, I haven't touched anything in the box yet. I just put some paperwork in there and closed her up and head home. So we'll go ahead and set this down here. We'll pop these up and here we go. Okay, so here's my transfer receipt and I got a couple of other things like a boar snake and you know stuff like that. This is a copy of my background check. We don't need that. Um, these are MOS adapter sets. Yeah, I was right. Modular optic system. But uh, we'll get into this in a minute as well. Um, and here's the invoice from where I got it. We also don't need to look at that. And here are the goods. So, okay. Um, well, we'll start uh, with these things. These are back straps, which can be put on the back side of the grip. Um, for people who have bigger hands like me, um, this will, there's a medium and a large for both with the, with the uh, beaver tail and without. The beaver tail is for people who have bigger hands like me maybe so that you don't get slide bite when it comes back. I'll probably experiment with these and see if maybe I don't like a bigger or better one and uh, yeah, it gives you all the tools and pins you need to, to put it on. So that's pretty cool. That's a Gen 5, or excuse me, a Gen 4 edition. I think they've been putting these in uh, with just about every Gen 4 that you can get. So those are pretty cool. Set those there. It comes with three, three of these. There's one currently in. So we'll actually, we'll just go ahead and pop this guy out real quick. So we have three double stacked. 15 round mags and the thing I like about the gen 5s is they have the orange followers um, You know some people think that's not a big deal and maybe it isn't but I kind of like it It will make safing the weapon a little bit easier. So we got three of these babies I don't know probably pick up a couple of more um, And the cool thing is is that even though these are gen 5 mags you can use gen 4 mags in here as well And I believe you can use other generations gen 3 mags, which I have a couple extras of which I will also get into in just a minute so we'll set those over there comes with your traditional Glock speed loader but um, you know I don't really use these things um, there are better ones out there but for what it for what it is you know if if, if you don't like uh, if you don't like pushing pushing the rounds down if it's too hard on your fingers it works it does what it's supposed to do I personally don't use it, but you know, some people might, and that's fine. Uh, then we have the cleaning brush arm and a nylon bore brush, but I mean, nylon brushes are kind of meh. They, um, I almost wonder why they even put this in here. I doubt I will ever use it. But the cool thing is, is it also has a, a, an eye for cleaning patches, which I actually picked up a bunch more of. So. I'm sure this will still be handy for me to use. Um, I'm also a big fan of boar snakes, so, you know, I'll probably get into that sometime, so we'll set that aside. Um, let's see, then we have the pistol lock, um, again, because of states like California and so on. Um, this is something else I will probably never use, but you never know. I mean, if I, have, if I know I'm going to have a bunch of kids coming over or something, um, I'd probably lock it up just to be safe and this runs through the barrel and through the uh breech um out the chain or out of the chamber through the breech and all that so that you can't actually close the slide so we'll set that aside and down here underneath we have important information um you know as excited as we can get with things like this we have to remember that it is a dangerous weapon and in the hands of people who aren't responsible um i'm a firm believer that firearms are very safe when they're in the hands of safe people but anyway there's some good information in here um which i'll probably go through later like i say this is the first time i've opened it this isn't the first glock i've opened but yeah okay now um although this uh, came from the factory and they fired one round. 
it's unlikely that it's loaded, but as a general rule of thumb, we always check to make sure that it's safe. So we already removed the mag. And we'll just go ahead and check the chamber there. Looks pretty clean. Actually, we'll just go ahead and lock the chamber here. Okay, so gun is safe. So why did I get a Gen 5? Um, well, like I say, I had a Gen 3, but I'm a left-handed shooter. And my entire life, I've grown up shooting firearms that were designed for right-handed people. And although this isn't specifically designed for left-handed people, there are a lot of features on here that make it really friendly to uh, lefties like myself. Um, and to borrow a line from one of my favorite YouTubers, lefty, not leftist, there is a difference. <laughs> it's a little joke for my very liberal friends out there. Um, I'm pretty liberal too, but not when it comes to these things. Anyways, so um, a couple of things that they changed is um, they went ahead and they rounded the front here. Um, I'm having a brain fart right now. I can't think of what that's called. Bevel. They beveled the front end like that. Um, Glocks are notoriously kind of box shaped. Um, you go back a couple gens and the front of the slide is pretty square just like that, you know, but now they've gone and they've beveled. They've beveled the front of the slide there. I think it has a nice aesthetic look to it, you know. Um, I think it makes makes it look a little Makes it look a little nicer, you know? I think so. I think it looks pretty nice. Yeah. Um, so, Glocks have always had the back serrations here, but they added front serrations. Um, I don't know how practical they are. I think um, if you put a sight on the top, maybe it would be easier to rack it with the front than the back. But I don't have a sight yet. I'm going to get into that in just a minute. But yeah, so one of the things that I really like about these Gen 5s is, besides the aesthetic things like the beveled front and um, and uh, these things that I just said and I can't remember, <laughs> um, is they, like I said, they added a lot of left-handed friendly things. So in pretty much every Glock before, your slide release and your mag release are always on this side of the weapon. Oh, they also remove the finger grips. So they went back to the old style where they remove the finger grooves and, um, and they made it nice and smooth. I personally prefer that. I, I'm not a big fan of the finger grooves, but that's because I have really big hands. So it just kind of made it uncomfortable sometimes. Um, but the cool thing with the Gen 5s is they added the slide release on the other side. So a lefty like me can just um, use their thumb like, like you're supposed to. And I think that's pretty great. Um, another thing is you may notice this little square here, and this isn't necessarily new for Gen 5. They did this with uh, Gen 4s as well, but the mag release, I can take the slide off and um, and it's a s very easy to do. It's a very simple operation, but you just have to remove a pin spring and then slide that out, put it in the other way, and then your button is over here, and the smooth side is right there. So it makes mag releases a lot easier for a lefty. Um, has a mount for lights or a laser, whatever your fancy is. Um, I may get a light for it because I think that would be more appropriate for me. But uh, we'll never know. My dad's a big fan of lasers. I'm not. Well, I shouldn't say I'm not. I just would prefer a different kind of sight. So moving on, um, the MOS, the Modular Optic System. And all that means is uh, previous generations for Glocks, um, I believe Gen 4 you could get MOS. Um, but Gen 5, um, I think pretty, yeah, not every Gen 5, you can get Gen 5s that don't have the MOS plate. And basically all it is, is if you remove this plate, you can then use one of these mounting plates out of here 
to put a red dot on it or any kind of optic that, that you kind of want to do. Um, I am very curious about a red dot on a pistol. I've never done that before. So um, I've gone ahead and already ordered a Vortex Venom. So that's on the way. So I'm going to mount a, an optic on there. Um, before, if you wanted to put an optic on a non-MOS Glock, you had two options really. You could um, remove the back sight and use the dovetail. Uh, they make special mounting brackets that fit inside that little dovetail there. See how it's kind of at an angle? Yeah. And then it would be a flat plate and you can mount it. Or you could take your slide, your top part here, and bring it to a gunsmith and they could machine it down. Um, but that can get pretty expensive. So I um, I wasn't interested in doing that. Um, that being said, the MOS version of this pistol tends to run about $100 to $120, sometimes even more, uh, than the non-MOS. Um, I happen to get a really good deal on this. Um, and that deal really is that um, I was basically able to do almost a straight up trade with my Gen 3 for this Gen 5 with just a little bit of money on top. Um, and that worked out pretty well for me. Um, on Gunbroker, and by the way, this is the first purchase that I ever made on Gunbroker. I had never tried it before, but when I was looking for, for this particular model, um, the uh, FFL that I ultimately went through, who was wonderful, by the way, suggested that I take a look at Gunbroker because um, I might find what I'm looking for there because apparently 40 cals are kind of hard to find and Gen 5 40 cals even more so. So um, I did, and I found one, and I collaborated with the uh, with the gun shop, and I sold them my Gen 3, which damn near covered the cost of my Gen 5, plus a little on the top, and now I have myself a left-handed, well, not left-handed, I guess, but left-handed friendly um, 40 cal. I have not shot this yet. As far as I know, there's only been the test round that's gone through it. Um, and I'm super excited to do so. Um, so I will probably make a follow-up video after I put a couple hundred rounds through it, just to just to compare it to my old one. My old one I put oh, thousands of rounds through, so I'm kind of, you know, the trigger... <laughs> I have a feeling this trigger pull is going to be a little bit more brutal than what I'm used to just because I'm so accustomed to my old my old Glock and and the worn well, I wouldn't say worn but maybe worn in trigger so that the pull is a little more smooth on my on my old one but nevertheless I'm excited to try it and uh, yeah so this was just a little unboxing and general first impressions um, you know the cool thing one final note that I just like to say one thing that I like about the Glock is how little it has changed in the you know 30 years they've been around you can pretty much look at a Gen 5 Glock and you know right away that it's a Glock just because of what it just because of what it looks like you know like they all kind of have that same that same look to them you know so so yeah, so um, this is my new Glock. This um, is something I've been very excited about. Um, part of the reason uh, I even looked at it was my mother recently passed away and it sort of um, rebirthed my interest in firearms because my dad is is a, a big firearms enthusiast and uh, we, we've talked a lot about guns and... Um, and it's something that I hope to share with my father uh, moving forward. Of course, he has quite a few of his own, but um, I don't think he has a 40. So this will be fun for for us to go to the range and put a few hundred rounds through. Um, anyway, that is my unboxing and initial impressions. And I 
We'll make a follow-up video sometime in the future, and until then, I hope you enjoy. Stay safe. Happy Fourth of July.